Meanwhile, the state budget is also under scrutiny. Yeah, that state budget is under scrutiny at the Capitol. Uh, but some undocumented immigrants in Texas affected by the pandemic find themselves in a no-win situation. Those were among the topics up for discussion today, as our Tom Miller caught up with Alana Rocha of the Texas Tribune. The Tribune reports undocumented immigrants across Texas who are behind on their rent are self-evicting. The Tribune says they have rights during the eviction process. Why aren't they using them? Uh, the short answer, fear. Uh, you know, they fear taking, you know, their landlords to court uh, because immigration and customs enforcement agents have access to the courthouse and there have been past, you know, non-immigration related cases where immigrants have been arrested by those ICE agents. And so, you know, you have that coupled with the fact that many didn't qualify for obviously federal stimulus, uh, can't collect unemployment, uh, afraid to seek out the, the voluntary aid that's out there. Um, and uh, adding to that fact is uh, that immigration or immigration eviction moratoriums are expiring. You know, those went in place back in March when this whole thing hit and the economy essentially shut down. And, and many of those now are are being lifted and, and people are finding themselves without a cushion. And so they're they're getting out even before they've been served an eviction notice. Yeah. President Trump signed this memo excluding undocumented immigrants from the census count. So what would be the impact here in Texas? Uh, it's unclear, but, you know, recent estimates show that 1.8 million uh, people uh, counted here in Texas are undocumented. And with the uh, congressional districts drawn to be even in population, I mean, that's a substantial portion of it that, that wouldn't be counted. Uh, and so, you know, 36 right now, uh, not clear. Again, we we're expected to add seats the next time because of the population growth as a whole. Uh, and, and there's just no good data set to, for the government to go on. You remember that the Trump administration tried to add a citizenship question to the census. That was struck down by the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, last year here in Texas, they tried to look at the voter rolls based on driver's license data, but that was flawed because uh, several people ended up being naturalized citizens that they, uh, you know, tried to disenfranchise. So, um, you know, it, there's no good data set coupled with the, the long legal fight that, that is likely to happen. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens in court. We also learned that state lawmakers on the budget, they're going to have under $12 billion less to spend next session thanks to COVID-19. How do lawmakers go about figuring out what to keep, what to cut? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a hard process to say the least. I mean, take first the, the fact that, you know, many of the lawmakers that think they'll be back might not be back because they're up for re-election in November. So they might do all this work now, not even to see it through uh, come January when the legislature reconvenes. Then there are just several unknowns, which are noted in this uh, estimate from uh, Glenn Hagar, the state comptroller, state accountant. You know, we don't know when the pandemic will be under control, when businesses will be reopening, when oil and gas will resume. And and then, you know, looking at the line items, the biggest chunks of the budget are education and health care. Uh, just last session, lawmakers said that they would up the state's portion of education spending you know what to only cut that this session uh that would be difficult and then of course uh cutting any budget from the healthcare agencies kind of at the forefront of uh the pandemic uh aren't easy either so yeah not not a favorable nobody is favoring uh, the lawmakers tasked with uh, looking at this right now yeah it's gonna be real tricky all right alana rocha with the texas tribune thanks alana thank you